Hi there, welcome to Mind Builders Hub, and today we're going to talk about the public storm warning signals. And you know that public storm warning signals are a crucial component of disaster management systems designed to alert and inform the general public about impending storms and their severity. These signals are primarily used to ensure the safety and well-being of individuals, communities, and property in areas prone to severe weather events like hurricanes, typhoons, tornadoes, cyclones, and public storm warning signals serve as a vital communication tool for government agencies, meteorological organizations, and local authorities to convey critical information to the public. So, in the Philippines, we are using the following color-coded cloud here, representing the rainfall advisory. So, let's see what's the meaning of yellow, orange, and red. So, for the yellow warning, it means that you'll be receiving 7.5 to uh, 15 millimeters of rain can be observed in one hour and expected to continue in the next two hours so it means that when you see yellow warning in your place well the rain is heavy and flooding is possible that is why you need to monitor the weather condition if that escalated to orange warning it means that 50 to 30 millimeters of rain may be received or observed in one hour and expected to continue in the next two hours. The rain is intense, that is what it describes. And flooding is threatening, so what you need to do is to be alert for possible evacuation. For the red warning, it means that more than 30 millimeters of rain can be observed in one hour and expected to continue in the next two hours. The rain is torrential, and there will be a serious flooding expected in low-lying areas evacuation is needed so those are the color-coded rainfall advisories coming from the Pagasa. so now interpreting this sort of uh, typhoon you will see how the colors changes as it approaches the land so for our objective is that we need to enumerate and distinguish each public storm warning signals and let us see what are the factors that make the Philippines susceptible to typhoons. Remember that uh, some people from colder places would choose the, tro the tropical countries that are congested for retirement and investment purposes. And they are attracted to the average weather and climate of the Philippines. You will see lots of foreigners living here in our country. But... The not so good thing about this weather is the usual occurrence of typhoons in the country. And well, ever wonder why this country is very prone to typhoon? The answer is because of the two reasons. Because of our topographical location, wherein we are really surrounded by water, and the other one is because of our geographical location. And just you can see the Philippines is near. The equator which is somehow hot warm humid air the frequency of the typhoons in the philippines is mainly due to its geographical location and warm ocean waters the archipelago is located in the western pacific ocean and the center of the, of the country is located about 1200 kilometers north of the equator and thus in the middle of the Pacific Typhoon Belt. So, what are the roles of Pagasa? Pagasa means Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration. And all of the information regarding the weather is provided by them. This is under the Department of Science and Technology or DOSD. They are the one who monitors the weather and climate of the country, they provide information to the public about the typhoon and flood warnings, they deliver the weather forecasts and advisories. And aside from that, they provide facts related to climatology, meteorology, and astronomy. 
So what are the public store warning signals? The public store warning signals or PSWS are hoisted before the corresponding meteorological condition prevail over the locality. We have four warning signals and one by one. For signal number one, the wind speed the wind speed is about 30 to 60 km per hour and the expected time of occurrence is at least 36 hours. These are the usual estimated impacts of the wind. It may break uh, twigs and bunches of small trees. It may uproot or tilt some banana trees. It may also or a few house, houses with ropes made of nipa and kogan may be partially uprooted. Rice crops in flowering stage may suffer significant damage. For signal number 2, the wind speed is 60 to 100 km per hour and the expected time on occurrence is at least 24 hours. The estimated impact of the wind may tilt or break some coconut trees, may uproot twig trees, many banana trees may fall, rice and corn crops may be affected badly. Most of the Kogan and Nipa houses may be uprooted, a fruit or some old galvanized iron ropes may be peeled off may bring light to moderate damage to the country. In signal number 3, the wind will escalate to 100 to 185 km per hour and the expected time on occurrence is at least 18 hours. The estimated impacts of the wind, it may destroy a number of coconut trees, large number of big trees are uprooted and almost all banana trees are destroyed. Rice and corn crops may suffer heavy damages. Structure of light to medium construction. Construction may, may be damaged and may bring moderate to heavy damage to the community and for most parts of agriculture and industrial sectors. Majority of the neighbor houses are approved or totally destroyed. Electrical power, communication, and internet connections may be disrupted in major parts of the affected area. And lastly, signal number 4, the wind speed escalate to 185 km per hour or more than that, and the expected time of occurrence is at least 12 hours. The estimated impacts of the wind may be a widespread damage to the coconut to rice corn, in other crops plantations and may suffer severe losses. All banana trees are uprooted. Structures such as residential and instructional institutional buildings are damaged. Electrical power, communication, and internet connections may be severely disrupted in the whole affected area. The overall damage to the whole community can be very heavy. It must be significant a reminder to everybody that a tropical cyclone is in constant motion toward the Philippines when Pagasa raised the warning. Sometimes abrupt changes in signals will happen. So what are the weather equipment used for weather monitoring? Number one is the Doppler weather radars. Another, we have the automated rain gauge. Aside from that, we have the landslide early warning sensors or LEWS. We also have the automated weather station that measures the global solar radiation, the ICT. Temperature, relative humidity, the wind speed and direction, there's a rain gauge, and data logger. So that's it for our discussion about the public storm warning signals. Remember that those specific designs and implementation of public storm warning signals may vary from one region or country to another, but they typically consist of a set of standardized symbols, colors, and communication methods 
convey the threat level associated with approaching storm. And that's it for today. Do not forget to subscribe in our channel, The Mind Builders Hub. Bye bye.